Welcome to Freshly for Animated. Recently, a friend asked uh, whether it would be possible to use smart magnet rigs to swap a character in an existing animation with a different character. And I thought it's a topic that's interesting enough to record a video. Of course, this video will uh, illustrate the infinite flexibility of smart magnet rigs and the uh, incredible value that uh, EDAP tools provide to Flash animators. To start with, here is the setup. I'll start with this uh, rough example and then uh, move on to something more complex. We have these two characters with different proportions. The yellow one has been animated. Let's uh, see the animation. So this is the animation and we would like to swap this character with this character. Now what do we need to do? Obviously we need to swap the symbols and to actually maintain the movement without losing the actual character we'll use uh, smart magnet joints to reconstruct the animation after we swap the symbols. To start with I'll grab the blue character's uh, symbols. None of these has been rigged so this is just um, a bunch of symbols. I'll put them here at the end of the animation we won't need this uh, anymore and I will roll over the rig info from this guy to the blue guy to make them the same rig. So there's two places where smart magnet rig info is written. One is externally, the symbol instance is on the stage and the second place is the magnet targets which have IDs. So we'll need to do both. Roll over rig info to the right this will make this thing externally the same rig so if we load it here you see it says yellow if we go here and load it it again says yellow but it obviously has different proportions now the next thing to do would be to copy the magnet targets from this character and put them into each of these symbols so that we can use smart magnet joints. Before we can do this, I'll have to give him center markers so that I can uh, match the position of the elements. So I'll just uh, very quickly go inside the elements and give them center markers. Now when we have the center markers, we can go one by one and copy the magnet target layers. So let's start with uh, this one here. Copy layers and go into the corresponding leg and paste the layer here. So we're copying the magnet target which has been tagged with uh, Smart Magnet Rig Info and I'll just uh, put it in proximity to the registration point of the foot and just snap it. And we need to do that for all magnet targets. So copy the magnet target from the yellow guy and paste the layer here. Then snap it. Copy the magnet target from the arm. And snap it. And now we need to grab the ones for the torso. So copy the magnet targets layer and paste them here. 
Now I'll snap them one by one. The head, one shoulder, the other shoulder, and the ones for the legs. All right, we can test by moving the torso away, doing a chain selection and snapping the elements. Everything snapped. So for all intents and purposes of smart magnet rigging, these two are the same rig. We don't need this anymore. Now let's go here and look at the library. In the library, we have one folder with the elements of the yellow character and one folder with the elements of the blue character. Let's select them all and trim the names to make them the same. Now these are the same. So if I grab the blue symbols and drop them in yellow characters folder, Flash will ask me how to resolve the conflict. And I will say, replace existing items. When you go OK, the symbols are replaced. And now we have the movement that is preserved, but the character is disassembled. So we need to reassemble the character. How to do this using smart magnet joints. I'll save my file and I'll show my effectors. Now let's look at uh, the pinned feet. Go in outline mode and look at the center marker of this foot. I'll put this effector over the center marker so that it coincides with the foot. I would like to keep the position of this foot and reassemble the character in relation to this pinned foot. To reassemble magnetically everything around a, an effector, you need to press Ctrl and the Smart Magnet Joint shortcut. So in this case, it's a Ctrl tilde. Everything snapped in place. Now I'll snap the effectors and go to the other keyframe and do the same. This foot stays pinned, so snap and now here we have a little offset with the other foot so we can solve this by selecting the torso and using this uh, button here we'll solve so this is now solved and I can keep doing the same using this one which is still the pinned foot the other ones in the air, reassemble the character. Now, this is still the pinned foot, so reassemble based on that. Now, here, obviously, this stretch will be much wider because this character has different proportions, right? He has longer legs. This is still the pinned foot. I might want to make a slight adjustment to this one just to put it um, solidly on the ground. So I'll snap the effectors and using Kineflex I'll position this foot just on the ground. And then in the next keyframe I will select this effector because this will be my pinned foot now and reassemble the character around that effector. Okay, and let's go to the last keyframe and reassemble around that effector as well. Now, obviously, because of the different proportions, the much narrower torso and the longer legs, we can't just leave it like this. We need to make an adjustment to this pose. So, Snap effectors again, and with Kineflex, I will first move this foot somewhere here, and then holding down Shift, I'll rebalance the pose like this. And I might need to, I don't know if this overshoot 
is uh, is meaningful. We didn't have it in the other version with the yellow guy, so I'll probably just keep it keep it like this. Much less uh, less pronounced. Okay, so we've recreated the animation. I mean, obviously there's no cleanup, but I can hit play and we can see it. And uh, cleaning it up will be very easy. Let's let's clean up a bunch of symbols. So, for example, the arm and the leg will need uh, just normal cleanup. So I'll go like this and like this. So these are cleaned up. And here we'll need IK cleanup for this leg. So I'll select the effector and go IK cleanup. And maybe we need more cleaning up of this um, arm here. And more cleaning up here. And then these, um, the legs, both will need IK cleanup. Just here, select the effector and go uh, Alt plus Q and select the other effector and go Alt plus Q. So these are now IK, IK cleaned up. And uh, we, can, we can watch the animation again. So we successfully transferred Let's just publish it. We successfully transferred the animation from one character to another within a few minutes. Let's uh, open the original one and just publish this one. Okay, so this is the original animation and this is the transferred animation. Not bad, not bad at all. Now let's look at something which is uh, much closer to a real life task. Uh, here we have a rabbit, I'll publish it so that we can see it, which I animated some time ago. And uh, we'll try to swap the rabbit with the fox. And this is the animation. We won't deal with the facial expressions. And here we have obviously have a synced timeline and uh, the facial features are animated inside the head symbol. I won't uh, deal with that. We'll just uh, leave the face uh, without any animation. So what I have already done is I have prepared the fox for all intents and purposes. This is the same rig as the rabbit. If we load the rabbit rig, it says rabbit. And if we go to the fox frame and load the rig, it says rabbit as well. I've rolled over the rig information from the rabbit. So externally, it's the same rig. And I have also, as I showed you in the previous example, I have copied the magnet targets with their IDs and pasted them within the fox's um, elements. I've removed the bow tie just to simplify the task so that we have a matching number of symbols. So we don't really need the fox on this timeline anymore. I'll uh, get rid of this frame. And there are some specifics which uh, we need to consider as well. When I animated the sequence, when I animated the rabbit, I uh, obviously never intended to swap it with a different uh, character. So there are certain things that uh, I'm, I'm not saying that they could have been done better but uh, we should just be aware of. If we look inside the torso here, you'll see that the back leg, just because of the flexibility of smart magnet rigs, does not match the magnet target. When you rotate the torso, I wanted to keep the perspective so um, the back leg does not match the magnet target. If I decide to snap this character in this frame, we'll end up with this 
which tells us that when we reconstruct the fox, we'll have to deal separately with the back leg. So I'll undo this. And uh, now let's just uh, swap the elements. I'll lock the shadow. We won't uh, deal with it at all. And look at the library. Here all the elements have already been renamed. So uh, their names are the same. If I grab the fox bits and drop them into the rabbit folder and go replace, we'll end up with a fox. Now, once this is done, we can grab them back and put them in the fox folder. I'll leave the shadow, doesn't really matter. This one was not used, that's fine. And I can now even add fox back to the symbol names again. So I'll just add a prefix, fox. It doesn't matter, we've done the swapping and now they're back in the foxes folder. I'll save this and let's uh, play it back and see uh, what we have. So much of the animation has been preserved, obviously all the angles, uh, but we'll need to deal, reconstruct the figure and deal with uh, some of those cleaned up frames, which uh, we have to just get rid of them and add them again. But uh, let's uh, just start keyframe by keyframe, reconstructing and analyzing. So. Let's show the effectors. Let's look at the position of the legs and think how should we approach this reconstruction. Let's make sure that the effectors are where we want them. Based on the feet, not on the legs. So I'll position this one here and this one here. We'd like to keep the feet and everything should be based uh, on the position of the feet. Now, I'll reconstruct this one separately. So I'll select these two elements and go control plus tilde. One by one. I'll do it again here. And then for now, I'll select and lock this leg. And let's uh, just deal with the rest. Select one effector, this effector, and go control tilde to reconstruct the whole character. Go to the next keyframe, control tilde to reconstruct the whole character. So this leg is isolated, I lock the layers, but we'll reconstruct the whole character and then see if we need to deal separately with that leg. So just go keyframe by keyframe, reconstructing. Now, he's already in the air, so we want uh, snap the character to this effector anyway. If we would like to use the effector, we'll have to snap the effector first, and then we can continue doing that. Or we can just use the master parent while he's in the air. We can just use the master parent and go chain select and snap. Now, maybe I should just undo and now when he is in the air, I can try to release this leg as well and snap it. I think it looks better. Uh, this one looks fine. This looks fine. Okay, so I'll just use the master parent for all those in the air positions. He's still in the air. I'll just, uh, I will just lock this and reassemble everything else without touching that, uh, that leg. And now do the same. 
and here we'd better probably just uh, go to the first frame snap the effectors here and use the same positions yes use the same positions for for the legs use this effector to reassemble the whole character again so we just continuing same process keyframe here and there's a couple of more keyframes nothing nothing special about those to watch the animation okay so the ones that break are basically the cleanup frames which we need to get rid of and recreate so let me just slide this and show more of the timeline and look at these this is the neck which uh, obviously was uh, FK cleaned up so I'll recreate the FK cleanup for the neck and the leg obviously has been uh, IK cleaned up so I'll just IK clean up the leg there you go now we have another one for the neck I won't bother I'll just just get rid of it because this is uh, only going to slow us down it's unimportant as long as you understand uh, very well what we're doing so these have been fk cleaned up now a lot of rotation here so this is the arm remove and clean up again This thing here is um, the other leg. Let me just get rid of these and uh, clean up. And this is the other arm. Remove and clean up. I won't uh, bother further cleaning them up again I'll just remove these it's, uh, for the purposes of this demonstration I'm pretty sure that it's all uh, very cle clear what we're doing uh, the neck had uh, an extra key so uh, we need to just uh, the twin was split so we need to grab the twin graph from here and reapply it to the neck okay or i could just do a, just the clean up like this and it will look okay all right and get rid of these did i forget to Huh, that's so funny. I've forgotten a key. Let's lock these first and resnap. Now the arm definitely this one needs a, a clean up. 
and it will need more cleaning up here. Get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these. And let's, uh, let's see the animation. All right, now I'll save again and I'll grab the original from here and paste it here so that we can compare. There will be no symbol conflicts. I'll just put it in front. All right save again and publish so within five to ten minutes more or less successfully we managed to transfer an existing animation to a character which has different proportions of course some more polish might be needed and um, i did not bother doing anything with the facial features, but uh, adding a few blinks would be quite easy. Freshly for animated.